Just to recap the scores from day two, final scores were in fifth place, West Coast on 656.66 points, KZN was fourth on 806.54 points, Berlin third with 8016.66 points, second place was Border on 841.30 and Eden was lying first on 1006.59 points. Well, the start of the tournament for day three was similar to the other days. Management placed their guys, covered the area, had guys on the bricks looking for big fish, um, guys on the beach throwing big baits in holes, other guys working the sandbanks for your lesser sand sharks and your share. There weren't too many big fish around early in the morning and Gerard Geese from Eastern Cape was lucky enough to catch a nice hammerhead shark during this period. Well, Gerard Geese uh, has been around for many, many years. He's fished many of these tournaments. Um, he's definitely one of the top anglers in the country. Um, he knows his game, he knows what he's doing. And he knew all he had to do was just stick it out, keep on working hard, get those points in. Doesn't have to be a big fish, just keep on racking up the points, and at the end of the day, you'll do well. The morning of day three looked good, but we knew there was some bad weather coming later in the morning. The southwest was going to come through and change conditions and make it very difficult. Well, as the morning sort of progressed and the tides started pushing and the, and the troughs and the holes started filling up, a few diamond rays moved in and Provision Moodley ended up hooking to a very nice diamond ray. Alright, so we got Prevashan from Border getting a beautiful diamond ray here and a quiet morning like this morning, that is an absolute bonus fish. So um, he's going to measure the fish quickly, so we've got the research here, they're going to do a few samples and put a acoustic tag in the fish and release it. Yeah, so through the years we've realised that the four or five of us that generally go fishing aren't always the best anglers. So. Um, working with the Sasa guys, especially when we're targeting um, bigger sharks and stingrays with the number of guys on the beach and the level of skill just makes sense for us to put our fishing rods down and um, yeah, use that as a platform to 
do any sort of work that we needing to do. At the moment we're busy fitting uh, larger stingrays, mainly duckbills and diamonds with acoustic transmitters so we can uh, monitor their movements all along our coastline. So the ones we're using at the moment, they are the, the, on the bigger side of the range. Um, you can fit your tag size to your animal size. Um, fortunately working on the bigger animals you can go with the biggest tag which means you have the bigger battery. Um, these transmitters have a 10 year lifespan so we can get some really amazing uh, information on their movements. And it all works uh, on sound, as the name suggests, acoustic telemetry. The transmitters all emit on the same frequency. Uh, they send out a unique signal uh, per, per tag. And whenever that transmitter comes near any of our underwater listening stations, we get a date and time stamp. And we obviously know what number matches with which fish. And then we can track its movements along the coastline that way. Well, it's always nice for anglers to give back and help the researchers in the work that they do in protecting our species and our environment we fish in. Well, some of the Zuland anglers that are known to be able to catch diamonds also got into the action and landed some diamond rays within that area. Lou Ellison from Natal also hooked a nice diamond and added some valuable points to his scorecard. Over the years, Natal fielded a very young side. They've always been in the running, just not getting there. And we knew within the next year or two that they were gonna get strong. Those young anglers were gonna develop. They get mentally stronger. And they're gonna understand how the tournament works. And we could see the Natal guys just getting better and better. As the tournament progressed, they were heading towards something and the anglers were getting more confident and they were landing better fish. So that young Natal side was starting to do very well. Shoal Marais from Western Province catching a nice little bull ray. Shoal is obviously one of the top anglers in the country, but on a national tournament, he's one of those quiet guys. He's sort of on the side there. You very seldom see him in the big crowd and smashes, but he's doing his job and he's just ticking over and racking in those points. Very good angler, very good skills, doing his thing and not placing too much attention on himself. On a difficult day like today, every single fish you catch counts, doesn't matter how big, so hooking a fish and landing it is very critical on difficult days like today. was in the area again on day three and some management place 
anglers there specifically to target a big fish. It's a risky move. You can have an angler there the whole day and you can catch nothing. But if you hook into a good fish um, and get those bonus points, it helps the team a lot. Western Province took him here, they put him on the rock and said to him, your job is to look for that bonus fish. And he was lucky enough to hook into a very nice fish. Well, a bailey is not known as a very fast fish. It's a very strong, slow fish, but they're still never easy to fight within the bricks. Um, there's a way to fight them. Um, you've got to, really got to pull this fish very hard. If you slack up on him and you give him an opportunity to get away, he'll just keep on swimming away from you and you'll end up fighting that fish for hours and hours and must probably lose him at the end. So it's a difficult fight, it's basically a slow swimming fish, but a lot of heavy weight, where you just gotta put your back into it and pull him as hard as you can, obviously without losing him. When you're fighting a big fish like that in a tricky area, there's a lot of pressure on you as an angler, because you realize there's so much on the line. Um, that fish can rocket your team up, and it can place you in the top 10, or even in the Springbok side. Well, the Lass is not the easiest place in the world to land a big fish. It's slippery, there's a lot of rock, there's rock in the water. So as an angler, you've really got to just sort of focus, keep your balance, fight the fish well, get it into the right area to land it. And Emia did an excellent job landing that fish on the rock. Well, within any tournament in the Cape Waters, if you land a Paley, there's, you can celebrate it because it's very good points. And, and as I said, that can really bring your team standing and your personal standing right up to the top. Some of the good catches for the day was a nice diamond ray by Peter Miller from Eden. AJ De Beer also got a nice diamond ray. Johan van Staden from Gauteng North got a very nice cob. Louis Nell from Western Province ended up getting a nice hammerhead shark. A nice bronzy that uh, Ralph Pank has got with Connie from Western Province holding the fish up for him. And Hein Davids from Gauteng North with a diamond ray. The points for day three are as follows. In fifth place, we got West Coast on 876.78 points. Fourth place, Burland on 984.67. Border was in third place on 1033.82. Kozun Natal moved into second place on 1107.99. And Eden was still in first place. Well, certain teams moved position within that top five. It was getting very close and very tight and leading up to a very, very interesting last day. Well, it's the final morning of the South African Championships here at Strasby. It's an exciting morning. The four top teams are chasing each other with Eden or Southern Cape in front. KZN came through yesterday with a bang and they're just right on the heels of Southern Cape. And then Borda and Burland are sort of also chasing each other but also looking for the top spots. The conditions are not very good at all. It's windy, it's cold, it's rainy. But there'll be a few fish and those lucky teams that can find those fish will get themselves in the medals. Well, the last day turned out to be the toughest day of the tournament. 
the weather really got miserable. It was raining, it was cold and windy. Um, there was a lot of tide and sore bodies out there. But everybody still tried their best. Fishing was difficult, but at least some fish were caught. Second try, uh, fished for a diamond first try, went over to lesser fishing, or sand shark, like we call it here, and uh, first try, first one on. to be selected for the Springbok side you need three years ranking points and how the system works for the current year they'll use 50% of your points the previous year 30% of your points and the year before that they'll use 20% of your overall points so that's how they determine your current ranking and obviously you will be ranked right in the top there to be viable for selection for the side and then even after all your points there's a lot of other factors they would look at. That would be your personality, your wading ability, your fitness, etc, etc, etc. So that's the job of the selectors, to pick the guys. But first of all, you need your points over three years to be sort of right in the top 10 at least to be able to make that side. Towards the last few hours of the tournament, conditions really got difficult. And on the northern boundary, there were some shad coming out. And most of the anglers started migrating towards this area just to catch one or two more fish before the end of the day. I think we're holding our own today. Uh, we got a couple of lessers this morning. Uh, we've had quite a few shad. I think we've got three cob. We've got a spotty on the bricks. And yeah, I think we're hanging in there. Guys yes, are trying hard. Just where our position is now, I think we just got to plug along and just keep the scoreboard ticking. Yeah, I think there was about four points difference this morning, but it's but I think we going to be very close. Well, once again, management plays a very big role in this tournament. And although this shed was small, they were weighing half a kilo to a kilo, so half a kilo shed would be one point. But if you had all 12 anglers in that smash, and each angler got three or four or five shared, a lot of points can be racked up very quickly. And some of the provinces um, put their whole team in there and they really took advantage of this last few hours in the tournament to rack up some very good points. unusual to see so many shad being caught at a tournament um, over the years it's very seldom that you see so many shad coming up in one spot especially down in the Cape area so it was something new for all of us and as a manager you had to be sharp to get you guys to adapt quickly and to be able to catch those shad One of the teams that did exceptionally well within that shared smash 
Whereas that Natal group of guys, um, they were well oiled, a fit young team, they moved fast and they really ended up catching a whole lot of share. Well, this is where we could see good management in action. They were ready, they had all the anglers together, the way cards were there. It was all about speed and numbers. Um, they had the anglers catching fish, sign the way cards quickly, put bait on, and get back in the water quickly. Um, it was just a very nice display of a whole team structure, including the management working together. All right, obviously everybody knew how important catching the share before the end of the tournament, and it just became crazy. Um, it was chaos. Guys were running like mad, um, hooking fish. Some guys lost fish, casting over each other. So it really became a bit crazy. Um, you had to sort of keep your calm and just operate within this madness to capitalize on this last hour or so of the tournament. All right, well, that's the end of the tournament. Everybody just reeled in, lines up. So um, ended up with a bit of a shared smash at the northern boundary. I do think it made a big difference in the points, so, so the guys are going to go back now, get cleaned up, and we'll see you guys at the prize giving later. But I think it was one for the history books. I think it's going to be many, many years before we see a shared smash like that again on the South African Championship. So something to remember, and as we said, that shared smash ended up playing a very important role on which teams came first and second and third for the tournament. De derde plek op 223,13 punten bronze medaille winnen van Boland Wimpy Kirsten. Op 249 punten de 2019 Zuid-Afrikaanse kampioen. NJ Smith. The top three anglers for the tournament was in first place, Emir Smith from Western Province, um, AJ De Beer from Eden came second, and Wimpy Kirsten from Boerland ended up in third place. Now, all three of those anglers were uh, very lucky to actually catch a bonus fish, and that just shows you that bonus fish helps you to just get that step ahead of the rest and put you right on top in the standings. Die bronze medaille winners met 1129,18 punten worden.
be reflect Salva Medalia winners and in the Asian to be honored. Dream Fiat Panther Eden. Span wat nooit van Leni op 1257,76 punten. Die 2019 Zuid-Afrikaanse kampioene Kwazulu Natal. So at the end of the day, that little shared smash at the end really helped Natal, and they ended up overtaking Eden who was in the lead for the most of the tournament to win the overall tournament. So a happy bunch of guys, they deserved it, they played the game right, their management played the game right and for them to win the tournament they really deserved it. Well, it was time to call out the Springbok side and um, everybody is waiting for this moment. It means a lot to a lot of anglers and even the provinces. Um, you know, certain anglers like AJ who just missed the side last year knew he was in the running and I can only imagine how nervous he must have felt just before they announced that side. The pro tier team, the manager, Cody Groenewald. Coach Paul Looms. The guide, Vesi van der Westhuizen. The anglers, Louis Allison Kaiserin. AJ De Beer, Southern Cape. <laughs> the following angler, Greg Sutherland, KZN. <laughs> Volgende Engelaar, Gerrit Geese Oopia. Volgende Engelaar, Jean Marie Wiepia. The new cap in the team, Prevashan Moodley Border. Over three years and a new cap, Roldo Puntgieter, Southern Cape. strong Springbok side that was selected and from Penn we were very proud to have three of our ambassadors in the Springbok side, Gerard Geese, um, AJ De Beer and Jean Marais. 
Other anglers that made the side was Louis Allison from Natal, Greg Sutherland from Natal, Provision from Border made the side for the first time and we're very happy for him to make the side, as well as Roldu from Southern Cape who made the side for the first time. The Springbok side that got selected here is a very experienced, strong side. Um, they're going to fish international against Namibia in straight by. So you could see that the selectors went for the taller guys because there's a lot of wading in straight by. But all well experienced guys, strong anglers, and it's going to be very interesting to watch that international between South Africa and Namibia later on this year.